Yeah, I kind of like it. I grew up in Heatherwald, where Lisa lives now, which was a really nice neighborhood. People had about a half an acre. The houses were somewhat apart, and um, it was a great place. Lots and lots of kids, not much traffic at all. You could walk to the train station. You could walk. I went to kindergarten in the library, which was in the neighborhood. So we could walk to kindergarten, walk to the library. So it was really cool. I liked going up there very much. And then I went to the elementary school in Wallingford. And I went to junior high at the high school at Nether Providence. And then I went to Catholic girls school, a private Catholic girls school in Sharon Hill. And I loved it. It was all girls, and we had so much fun. It really was fun. My parents were really great. They really were. They really liked Jerry, which helped a lot. I was very close to both of my parents, and, and my sister Judy, too. Mother says the day I was born, she said to Judy, this is your baby, you have to take care of her. And, and Judy, Judy took it literally. I mean, she was two years old. <laughs> but she, uh, she always looked out for me. We shared most everything together. Uh, you know, we talk about boyfriends or school or friends or... We were very, very close. We still are. So there wasn't any place to sit. So we were standing on this wall, facing that wall, and Jerry and Lee and Judy were in the audience facing us. And we kind of were looking at each other a little bit. And um, Debbie's saying, yeah, he likes you. Look, look, he's watching. So anyway, after, after I had never had a boyfriend. I never even cared about boys up till then. So uh, we stayed afterwards. I went to Debbie's house and called my dad. And he said, you can stay. Just call me when you want to come home. So that's how we met. We hung around waiting for the square dance. And he had just become his class president. And I had just become my class president. And he liked that. So we, we just kind of hit it off and, and stuff. And the really funny part is, he said to me, oh, I'm going to call you. There's a dance at our school, you know, soon. And I'll call you. And I gave, I don't have anything to write down, but I'll remember. Well, I didn't hear from him. And I was heartbroken. So I thought, well, this is silly. I'll just see if I'll call him. Well, they weren't listed in the phone book, but his grandmother was. And I got a hold of his grandmother. And she was so sweet. She said, oh, dear. I think you want Jerry's house, and I'll give you the number, and she did. <laughs> so uh, I called him, and he said, oh, you know, he made some excuse. I could remember your number, whatever. So come to the dance, and, and you know, we'll get together there. So that's how that started. Does that, does that check out right yeah, now? That, that, that checks out, out and uh, she, had, uh, she had khaki, uh, Bermuda shorts on, and a top that was blue and black, and the stripes were going this way. I can well, still remember, remember it with, a, with a, that, that day. I still always remember that. We got married in 1960. Uh, she had to get her parents' permission. I was so young. To, you know, you, at 20 years old, you needed a, a, a parent's approval to get married. I had just turned 21, so I was legal. And people laughed at us. We went on our honeymoon. We left, and my mother insisted we had to dress up. People dressed up, and they left on their honeymoon. So we went on. I had a suit and a hat, flowers, and a whole bit. So we stopped at this little diner place for dinner. And when we came in, we probably had confetti we from probably had all of rice us. dropping out. And of all the people laughed at us when we came in. They knew we were honeymooners. It was. It was funny. funny. And we, we actually honeymooned where everybody there were honeymooners. It was really... Everybody had their own cabin. Everybody had a little But you ate cabin. meals together, like like if you were at camp or something. It sounds a lot like a summer camp. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. it, they had a pond with all different kinds of boats. They, they had a, a sign that you couldn't leave the place until you saw the beautiful spring at the top of the mountain. And so uh, we said, oh, well, we better see it before we leave. So we tr 
trudge up this whole big long mountain and what it is it was a bed spring a bed spring was the spring it was, it was a, a joke, joke. <laughs> it was, oh, like a box spring uh, yeah, right, yes. right, right. right yeah it was it was and and everybody kept it quiet because they wanted they got fooled they, they got wanted fooled. to fool they the wanted next you people. to get fooled so <laughs> they, nobody <laughs> let on what was happening isn't that funny that's really funny so i was busy with the baby and he was gone you know a lot of the time but for a while he worked in the job that we lived in we lived in the sample house for a while and it worked very well he could come home for lunch and just see the baby see me and we had we had this dog he loved to chase cars and he would chase jerry's car down the street when he'd come home for lunch and go back to work with jerry and he would climb up ladders <clears throat> to rooftops. But Jerry always had to carry him back down. <laughs> he could actually climb a ladder, and I would have to. I he would, couldn't go down. He couldn't he could go, go down, but I'd have to carry him down, right? It was fun. Uh, there were a lot of young people in the neighborhood, all those little children. and. Or, my brother lived across the street, which yeah. is very Joy, interesting. Lee and Mimsy lived across the street from us. Lisa was always very studious. I would say, you need to go outside and get some fresh air. We had a hard time getting her to go outside and, uh, and have fun. On the other hand, <laughs> Jerry was just the opposite. I mean, Jerry, you need to open up a book and study. And he would say, oh, I can do it later. I mean, he, he was like, he took school so uh, lightly, lightly, very lightly. Uh, both, both of you have gone to like every sporting event that any of us have had, <laughs> any award ceremony that any of us have ever had. <laughs> We've tried. You've gone to all of them. Yeah. Um, so you've certainly been very successful grandparents, at least from my perspective. Um, but how about from your perspective? What, what has that been like? Uh, being a grandparent is a wonderful, wonderful thing. I remember sitting on the front porch with you in my lap and I'd say, do you see that? That's a butterfly. It's yellow, <laughs> you know, trying to teach you things. I remember you reading to me constantly. Always read to you every day. We had to read something, yeah. yeah. And then John came along and, and I would have you both sometimes. And that was, that was really fun to watch you interact together. I kept a drawer. A making drawer. Do you remember the making drawer? Yes. I told the teacher about that and she thought that was so cool. All kinds of paper and glue and pencils. Stacks and of colored construction paper. Construction and paper. I loved opening it up. It was a smooth drawer. Uh huh. Wide. And I loved the process of just getting, picking the color I wanted, getting the colored pencils that I wanted. Yeah. And then bringing them into the kitchen. Right here. Right. And on that table and just. I don't know how long I would spend, but at the time it felt like hours. Yeah, Stop, yeah, we used to spend a lot of time doing that kind of stuff because you both liked it and I figured it was good for you. So I couldn't have enjoyed my grandchildren more. I mean, I loved that I could see you all. You were all close by. We've just enjoyed all of you kids so much and your blessing in our lives. Well, I think that we would all say the same thing. Uh, well, I hope having so. wonderful grandparents, so thank you. Okay. All right.